okay? This, this is the only joke that you're going to get from me today, okay? But anyway, it's crown of glory. And all of us should be striving for that. So I also put the verses up here. There's a lot of verses. We'll, we'll touch briefly through those. I, I learned a long time ago through, with Brother Ray Watson, which I miss dearly. And uh, excuse me about that, but uh, he always told me, let the word of God preach to you. You know, you don't have to glamorize it and all that stuff. Anyway, I'll get, I'll get through with this in a second. But anyway, the crown of glory, 2 Timothy 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 is, a, is, a, is my verse. But the comforts of holding forth the word of life for such time as this. You know, that's a wonderful truth for a Bible believer, isn't it? You know, the words in the King James Bible and your Bible are life. And when you hear the words, it makes a dead man come alive. And it makes a live man grow to the full uh, son of God status. And it will hone us to be used in times like this and in ages to come. Now, my verse is 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. But verse 6 says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only me, not only to me only, sorry, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Father God, we thank you for the day you've given us. We thank you for the time. We thank you for the study. We thank you for your word. And Lord, at this time, we ask that we just get ourselves out of the way and allow your word to teach us and preach to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Much like Brother Russell, it's kind of dark up here, but I've got light, and I'm not using Ed's version, by the way. So when you follow me, you know where I'm at. Okay, so uh, the crown that he's giving that Paul's talking about the giving is at the judgment seat of Christ. But before we get to that, I always like to talk a little bit about times past. You know, I got a little Morris in me now. You know, Morris always takes you back to Genesis type of thing. So that's where we're going. Go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verse one. After these things, the word of the Lord came upon Abram. And the visions saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and the exceeding great reward. And Abram said, behold to me, thou hast given no seed and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to the him saying, thou shall not be thy, thou shall not be thy heir, but he shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. And he brought him forth forth abroad and said look towards the heaven and tell the stars if thou be not able to number them and he said unto them so shall thou see be and he believed the lord and it was counted to him for righteousness and he said unto him i am the lord that brought thee out of ur chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it there's very something very interesting in those verses that you find in the king james bible at the word reward the word righteousness and inherit are first mentioned there. And the words are used in the prophetic program and they also used in the mystery program. God's earthly people and his heavenly people will have a reward. They'll be counted righteous and they will inherit some things. So briefly, we're going to look at the earthly uh, program, what, the script, what their structure is in ages to come. Many of you know this, and I, you know, all the messages this week, I don't know if you guys, I really enjoyed them. And I've, I've learned bits and pieces out of them. Like Russell said, you know, mentioned about, you know, you feel like going back and rewriting your whole uh, message. But I usually don't do that. I usually just stick with what I need to do. But man, what, what expound knowledge that we had here. And it came from where? The Word of God. So, so the, God, the authority, excuse me. God the Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Spirit is about authority and structure. There's nothing that they didn't design that don't have structure to it. He is the just and what? The justifier, isn't he? Something you've got to remember about the Word of God is the theme of God's book. 
And it's about a throne over the entire universe. It's about a seat of authority and all that's under it that impacts not only you and I, but creation itself. And the Bible talks about thrones and dominions and principalities and powers and mights, kings, judges, magistrates, rulers. And I wish it talked about ice cream parlors, <laughs> but it don't. Sorry. But anyway, and many terms that will show structure of authority in there. And we'll see that a little bit later. But in the beginning, God, when he spoke creation, it was perfect, wasn't it? But Lucifer, he decided to usurp the authority within God's ranks. Now, Satan, where was he at? He was in heaven, wasn't he? Okay. He, he, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, says he was there. And says he was, uh, would sin above heaven and the thrones of the stars of God and sit on a mount of congregation the sides of the north. He wanted to be like the most high God. So where is he at? He's up there in the heaven. Satan is. He also was on earth, wasn't he? Ezekiel 28 says, Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. So with that being said, Satan is known as what? What do we say Satan's known as? What is it? But what's what he's known as God of the world, right? God of this world and the prince of the power of what? The air. The air okay? You find that in Corinthians and you find that in Ephesians. After Satan's fall, now I know I'm going really fast. I'm a special commodities relocation engineer. I can't get out. The, I change gears. And in order to move, you've got to change gears. You know, I don't drive an automatic. I had to I had to drive a 10 speed. I don't stay in first gear. So you just hang on. Get on the back and ride. But after Satan's fall and, and he corrupted the heavenly host, God the creator made who? Adam, made a man, didn't he? And he told Adam to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And had dominion over the fish of the sea and the, over the fowl of the air and every th living thing that moveth upon the earth. You know what Adam had? What are we talking about? Authority, right? Adam had authority in the earth. He had a crown of authority on this earth. But not long after that, what did Adam and Eve do? You know, I was thinking about Carl when he talked about Adam and Eve. And I always said, you know, if I was Adam, I'd have, I'd have took Eve by the hair of the head and drug him to God and said, look what she did. You know, <laughs> right? No, you, you and I would have done the same thing. You know, you and I would have done the same thing. But not long after that, Adam and Eve sinned and the glory of God left them. And Adam gave the dominion over to Satan. He said, it's yours. And that's sad, isn't it? Because they had the glory of God. And we think about rainbows, and we might look at that a little bit. That was the glory of God. Somebody brought the ark book. There's a picture out there of the ark. It shows you about how many's been down there at the, in Kentucky? Quite a few of you have. You know, years and years ago, we, we used to make jokes saying, you know, we're in the dispensation of grace. Nobody builds arks anymore. <laughs> you know, but they have. And I recently saw a picture of them lighting it up at night with a rainbow over it. You know, the glory of God is shining that. that. That was a lovely picture. But Satan's plan was to destroy and take over everything that God ordained to be used in his earthly plan. But God had a plan himself he would use. And we are told in Genesis 3.15, as you know, I will put enmity between thee and thy woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You know what that is? That's the good news of God that he was going to see in the Redeemer for mankind. Okay? That's good news. But God's plan to redeem a fallen race was that, but it would be a battle for some time to come, wouldn't it? Constant battle. You know, when God told Abram, uh, Abram, you remember when he said, tell the stars? You know, I'm thinking about that. Look up and tell the stars. What was up there? Who was up there? The enemy, wasn't he? Also some 
heavenly host is up there too. God's people is up there too, host. But he told them to tell. There was authority in the stars. And I'm thinking that must have been some kind of setback for Satan's fallen angelic beings to hear another man of dirt say, I'm going to inherit something. And as the brothers talk about the sands of the, sea, sands of the seas and the stars, that takes care of the heaven and earth. And, and to have somebody to say, you're going to inherit this? To me, I'm like, that's bold. That's really, really bold. And through Isaac and Jacob, it would show them that he was going to work through a group of people to take back the authority over the earth. And in the fact, does not God call Jacob and, his, and Israel his elect? Now, what, we do, what do we know as Bible believers the elect is? It's, it's to do what? What is it? To serve, right? Okay, that's what is to serve. And, and so when the nation of Israel was born out of Egypt, they were to go into promised land to inherit what was theirs. And Joshua, what he would do is set up a tabernacle of congregation in a place called Shiloh. And he would be, the, that would be the governmental seat to distribute their inheritance. It wasn't Jerusalem. It wasn't Bethel. It was Shiloh. To me, that's like a neutral place out there in the land. And, and he, how, let me ask this. How could they inherit the land? Okay. Who was the rewarder? As, as Brother Matt was mentioned, God is the rewarder. And he gave it to who? Abraham and his what? Seed. For how long? That's what Genesis 3, 15, 13, 15 says. His seed, for thou seed forever. Now, how long is forever? Would you like this conference to last forever? Many of us would, wouldn't we? We have to go back to Nebraska. We have to go back to Minnesota. We have to go back to Michigan. Okay? David got that one. But anyway... Anyway, you know, you go back to your place and you have to work. No, I'd much rather be here because you know what? You're my family, you know, and, and that's another thing I don't want to get up. But anyway, we'll, we'll not talk about that later. But to think about this. Think about they got their inheritance from being a part of Abraham's seed. And Israel was soon set up judges, okay? And what else would they want to ask for? They want to ask for kings to rule over them. And you know what? God is like a good father. He said, okay, I'll give it to you. You know, but wouldn't he much rather be the rewarder and give them everything want, like a good dad does? I'm learning that. My kids are from, what, 30 down to 23, and I'm learning that they're still my kids. Whew. You know, you never get rid of them. Now I'm talking about grandchildren. Like, oh, man, does the cycle ever end? You know, when can me and my wife have a great reward? You know, when, you know but anyway, I, I see Brother Alex walking around with his... You know, grandbaby, and it's just like, you know, natural. You know, it's just like you want to provide and stuff. But the thing is, they would ask for judges and a king to rule over them. So we know that through David, they would be their king. And in Chronicles 28, he says uh, that before me, before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. David's going to be a king over Israel forever. That's, that's, that's something to think about, guys. And so you had the nation of Israel having their land and a king and a, for a kingdom as the reward. And we know that what Satan did to that, that, that structure, he corrupted it, didn't he? And, and when the Redeemer, when the Rewarder and the Righteous One, the, their inheritance would come as Genesis 3.15 promise. God's governmental structure and religious system had already been set up in a failing into apostasy. They was already gone. We always talk about uh, them politically. Israel was politically there, going, going, gone. And spiritually, going, going, gone. They had no... Rec well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that some people believed their Bible back then and looked for that Redeemer. But as a whole, a nation didn't, did they? So, so you think about that. And then they was entangled themselves with the rewards of the world. You know, I think about that highway that uh, uh, Matt had up there. You know, we always talk about there's a stairway to heaven. Would you rather take the stairway to heaven or a highway to hell? 
You know, you know, think about that. You think about the hell that you taught. What we're what I'm sharing right now is not for the lost person. A lost person will not inherit it in the eternal life with Jesus Christ. They'll have their reward in ages to come. Everybody will get a reward, guys. But think about this. First John chapter two sixteen says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but uh, is of what? This world. If you want the reward in this world, you can follow the world. But that is a, that's what would be a corruptible crown, and that's what they strive for. Turn to Matthew chapter 4. Many of you know this, these verses here. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. The Lord's being tempted, and He goes up on a mountain. And I want to go to verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up on the exceeding high mountain, and show him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he said unto them, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall, fall down and worship me. Now, anybody but the Lord... I believe would have done that. But how in, a, well, how in the world could Satan offer the Lord of glory the kingdoms of the world? What is it? He was the possessor of it. He's the God of what? This world. And even if, and you've got you to watch using that word if, he took him up on that. Who is still Satan? The prince and the power, he still had the first and second heaven. He would still bend over the earth like the most high. So, so the Lord Jesus Christ, moving on forward over here, Lord Jesus Christ, he takes 12 Israelites and gives them power and told them in Luke chapter 12, verse 32 here, he says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give to you the heavenly kingdom. The kingdom. And in Matthew 19, 28, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, that, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of His glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. There's a kingdom sitting up. There's a reward sitting, being set up there. So when it's all said and done in the earthly program, many of you know this, the Lord Jesus Christ will set up His earthly kingdom on earth, right? And, and he, sits up, he sits on the throne for a thousand years. And David and the twelve apostles will be under that, and the twelve tribes and then the nation. They will get their crown, their authority in ages to come. And they will be rewarded in the place, in the rightful positions. And God, through His Son, will have completed His plan over here in His rule and reign over the earth. See, they got a plan too, guys. But what about the body of Christ? You know, what is heaven like? What is our rewards in ages to come? You know, I teach and I believe that the body of Christ started with Apostle Paul. And there's also a familiar structure, system structure, much like Israel had to be placed, that will be placed in heaven, not on earth. If God is a God of authority and, and of structure, and the earth is a pattern like the heaven, okay, wouldn't that be reasonable to think that way? You know, that's not taking anybody away from anybody. It's the Word of God. He, is, he has a structure in His government there. And we see some things. In my text ber- verse, it says, Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not only me, excuse me, I just keep missing that, not to me only, okay, but unto all them also that loves His appearing. You know, when Paul wrote this to young Timothy, he was coming to the end of his life, wasn't he? And, and, the, and the fact that he mentions to Timothy, what is laid up for me, a crown of righteousness. Many times the word crown is used in the Word of God. And I looked all this stuff up. Crown of gold, crown of anointing oil, crown of glory, crown of the wise, crown of old men, crown of pride, 
crown of thorns, corruptible crown, incorruptible crown, crown of rejoicing, crown of life, a crown of twelve stars. A crown means an, an, an uh, ornament worn on the heads by the kings and sovereign princes as a badge of imperial and regal power and dig dignity. It also talks about executive authority. So when we crown somebody, we're get, that's authority. Good thing we don't crown presidents in the United States, right? You know, uh, that's worldly stuff. But think, over 300 times the word righteousness is used. And it means to apply to God the perfection of holiness, of His nature, exact rectitude, faithfulness. So this crown, of right, this crown of authority, of righteousness, His glory will come during a time what the Bible calls the judgment seat of Christ. Now Paul said he fought the good fight. I have finished my course. How many of you sitting here today have ran a race? Sometime in their life they ran a race and was on a course with a company to receive things. Okay? What about... The outcome of the prize that you won. Did you receive a crown? Did you receive a prize? I'm sure you did. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23. I didn't think about this, but the next meet, you got a QA and a at 4 o'clock? So we got between now and 4 o'clock to get through this. <laughs> you know, when I teach at our church, I say, you know, we got between now and the rapture to take our time through what we're studying. They ain't no use to be in a big hurry. I don't want to see your guys go. I'm sure you won't see me go. But anyway, <laughs> but that's, okay, I better shut up. Anyway, I don't want to give anybody another edge to kick me on out the door. But look, verse 23, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may attain. And every man that strive for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they that do it obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. And I therefore, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so I fight I... Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any, any means, when I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. You know what that word mastery means? You ever looked it up? It means superior in competition. That's what you want to strive. You want to be superior. And I can share this with you. I'm no stranger to that. In my physical body... I wrestled in high school. Wrestled. Okay? I wrestled in high school. To being involved in CrossFit training here lately. And you strive to be superior in those things. And the best that I ever did in wrestling in high school was fourth in the district and fifth in the regional. That really wasn't good enough, guys. But to me, I got a medal. You know? Fifth place was an alternate. And you hoped one through four would get sick. <laughs> and then you could go to the state. You know? But it never did happen. You know, the thing about CrossFit training, and many of you know I, I do that, there, this year alone in April, the CrossFit Games, 400,000 people worldwide entered the Games. And I ended up 2009, 2099 in my, weight, in my age group. I was a master's plus, and I was 58 in the state of Ohio and second fittest in the county that I live in. I was like, that's not bad for the first year, right? But what, what did that make me want to do? Strive more. I, that, i got to move. And if you've got the right coaches and stuff, he teaches you about nutrition, he teaches you how, how to prepare yourself, and he pushes you. But as we know, you know what? You've got to be careful with that because you know why? It becomes I. And one thing I'm thankful for our gym, and we call it a box, we don't have mirrors. So you can't sit there and go, look at me, look at me. It's not like that. But when you start to push yourself 
and you like to give up and you start get on and you start panting and raging. If somebody sick the Doberman on you, you know, you would still have enough power to get up and run out that door, you know. So that's the things you got to because the warring in your mind, you get to those dark spaces in your mind. You're like, I want to give up. I want to give up. That's why I was talking about early as a preacher. Sometimes we want to give up. You know, it's hard to study, isn't it? It's hard to come in and sit up the tables, sit out the coffee, put the songbooks up. We have a karaoke. That's our choir. They meet every Wednesday night if you want to join them. But that's, that's the choir. Or prayer. And then the chart. And then the studies. And then you sit in there and you wait. And you're like, ooh, it's 1025. We start 1030. And it's just you and your wife. Next thing you know here. So I don't know if they were waiting for the song to end or, you know, the prayer request to be finished or, you know, but they come on in anyway. And you're like, you got to feed the ones that are there, don't you? I learned a long time ago, you set the table, but you can't make people eat it. So the ones that are there, you feed them. You feed them the word of God. Amen. So, so the thing in the business world, okay, even in the business world, I was crowned last year, 2016, <clears throat> driver of the year. Out of, tw- out of uh, s- uh, seven districts, out of 14,000 guys, I was crowned driver of the year. I was a million miler. Out of 17,000 drivers today, I'm ranked 423rd. But I'm thinking to myself, is that good enough? Is that good enough? Well, it is good enough. Because you know what? I was recognized. And one thing I don't do, I don't try to push myself because I feel that if you're my boss, you sh- or I'm your boss, I should recognize the job that you're doing. With me? Okay. Think about, well, many of you can say the same thing, can't you? Many of you strive for things and got rewards and, uh, and awards, that type of thing. And, and isn't it, I hate to say this, but sometimes isn't it good to be patted on the back? You know, you know, it really is. So I think when you're doing the work of the ministry and, you, and, you, and you're gathering, your, God pats you on the back. The Word of God gets inside of you and you're like, that's why I'm doing it. But many of you can say this, but you know what? That world system, you know those things I just mentioned? It's corruptible. It's corruptible. And I don't, it don't mean a hill of beans in God's uh, program and it's subjected to decaying. It will rot. You know, it will perish and becomes an afterthought years later, like that World Series title those little cubbies won. <laughs> Don't mean nothing. It's gone. Now, to some of you in here today in the Chicagoland area, it's like, you got a shrine in your house. I've seen pictures. You know, Matt was talking about wearing that gear and stuff, and you're struggling. I went to bed, brother. I went to bed. <laughs> I'm like, I'll wake up and find out who won. You know, but the thing is, it, it, it's, it's corruptible. They won't, chances are they won't make it this year, will they? Oh, some of you are like, ah. <laughs> but you know, my beloved Cleveland Indians will. The tribe will go there. But many of you know, the race, in, with the race that I was running in a denominationalism, the, you know, the term fake news and all that stuff, wasn't you fed a bunch of fake news what, in, in the dom- and you got involved in that and you're running in that denominational race, you know, such as like altar calls and water baptism and stuff like that. But you know something? Wouldn't they desire the office of a bishop, a deacon, an elder, a pastor, a minister, a Bible teacher? Wouldn't that be a better thing to run towards? Because those are some things that you're going to build in heavenly. Those reward are going to last eternally. Isn't that much better? But many of us can't wait for a reward, can we? Honestly, you know, we go to we go to restaurants. Somebody mentioned they went to a restaurant the other day, and they sit there, and they sit there, and they sit there, and they looked around. And there was only three people working, and they kept coming back and apologizing to them. Did they get up and leave? No. But some of us want fast stuff, quick. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two verse one. Second Timothy chapter two verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is 
uh, in Christ Jesus and the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses shall commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warrant entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except strive lawfully. You know what our goal should be when we strive for? As, as, as for rewards and ages to come, faithful men. Able to teach others, endure hardness. You heard this all week. Not to be entangled. Please him that has chosen him, a good soldier. This is incorruptible, guys. You know, I've got a soldier in my family, my son, and I, I, and I thank him for what he's doing, but he's striving to be a good soldier. He has to go in front of boards to be promotable. Now, it's funny because there's four sergeants there, and then there's the uh, uh, first sergeant. Those sergeants asked you three or four questions, and he was boom, 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 boom. So he went in front of the guy next, the, the, the first sergeant, and he asked him, who's in the NBA Finals? My son's like the Cleveland Cavaliers and some team out west. He said those sergeants went because that first sergeant was a Golden State Warrior fan. And, he, and the guy says, what did you say? And he said it again. He says, good thing I didn't have a vote, you know, jokingly. So you go in front of boards and stuff in your life and you think about we should, well, and you go, in your life you have somebody to hold you accountable. You know, I think about people that leads ministries or don't have a local church. That is the pillar and ground of truth, isn't it, guys? And the thing is, that's authority. And every one of us needs authority in our life. Yeah, you know, I think they, they give me as a driver trainer authority to train you for accounts specific as, as far as what we're doing. And you're going to come up to me and say, you know, I've got 30 years experience. I can do this. You know what? In my mind, I'm going to hold you to that. And usually at nine times out of ten, it exposed what they're doing. And I'm like, I thought you said you had 30 years experience. You miss this gear. You don't get out and look. You back up, blah, blah, blah. And I have to sign my name on that piece of paper to allow them to move on with the company in their accounts. And I look at them straight face and tell them I'm not going to lie for you because my name is on that piece of paper, and I'll tell you exactly what I'll tell your boss. And when I do that, I said, hey, this guy's going to have this problem. This guy's going to have this problem. This guy's going to have this problem. Guess what happens? He has this problem. He has this problem. So, you know, a lot of people don't want to be held accountable. And that's accountability. First Corinthians, uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Ooh, I've got to move. Verse 15. Uh, Who is an image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, all things which created by him for him, as, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 basically say thing, say, says the same thing. It says, Having made known unto me the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom we also obtain an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him that worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Verse 20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and set him on the right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the which is to come. You know, those positions are in heaven and earth. Throne is a royal seat. Dominion is supreme authority. Principalities are territory of a prince, a royal state. Powers is to strain to exert force. Bible also mentions mites. You know what a mite is? Political power. 
or a king is a uh, sovereign of a nation, a chief. Uh, rulers is one that governs. The judge is one that skills is, has skills to decide on the merit of a question or value of anything. And a magistrate is a public service officer invested in the executive government of some branch of it. Those positions will be filled by the saints that the Lord judged and the Father placed us in. That what we do with the doctrine that is built up in our souls and how we plant in other people. You know, we mentioned in, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said to the twelve, it is, your, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Isn't that kind of what Ephesians is saying? According to His good pleasure, we have attained an inheritance. And, and those, you know what I'm talking about? The Father gives you those positions. And those positions that we just looked at, how do we get those positions? Brother Matt and Brother Russell was mentioned earlier. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 1 says, For we now... For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God, a house made without, made, not made with hands, eternal where? Amen. And it also says, for if this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is in heaven, if so, be that the being clothed, we shall not be found what? You know what that seems like? You're going to have some clothes on your back. You're not going to lose something there. And that clothes, well, before we get there, do you know heaven is a real place? You know? You know it is? And, and, and Isaiah 14 said that. You know what else is there? He says, well, there's three heavens, right? Okay, first, second, third heaven. They're also in heaven. What is heaven's like? It has a foundation like the earth. Jesus is there. There are thrones there. Things are real in heaven. There are doors and food in heaven. There are roads in heaven. That's right up my alley. You know, they're paved work of sapphire stones. And you talk about these new technologies, cars driving by themselves. Okay. The stones are going to line you up and keep you on the right path. There are houses in heaven. Uh, there are rainbows and precious stones in heaven. There's governments in heaven. There are animals and armies in heaven. And there are going to be clothed. And if so, being clothed, we shall not find, be found naked. You know what you mentioned? You know what you're going to be clothed with? Aren't you complete in Christ? Do you feel complete in Christ? You're clothed with righteousness. The glory of God is upon you. And wherefore we labor and present, whether present or absent, we are accepted by Him. And, and Matt covered this verse about, about uh, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We're all going to appear the judgment seat of Christ. And you have a foundation. Well, who is your foundation? We turn into uh, Corinthians chapter 3. We've got to run through this right quick. It says, not, uh, verse 3, verse 12 says, Now if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble, if, ever, if every man's work shall... Be made manifest, for that day shall declare it, because if it shall be revealed by far, and the, the far shall there try every man work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall see, receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he suffer loss, by, but he shall be saved, yet so as by far. You know what far is, right? I can't, I got to remember the, the people in Maine, you know, they was meeting in a far hall. And I said, y'all still meet in a far hall? And they're like, what? Y'all still meet? Far. F-I-R-E. <laughs> far. Okay. But anyway, notice, notice the gold, silver, and precious stones. Okay. That's what far is. Okay. I'm sorry. 
I'm from the highlands of Virginia. <clears throat> you know, I'm not a mountain folk. I'm from the highlands. But anyway, uh, <laughs> notice the gold, silver, and precious stones and wood, hay, and stubble. Religious teaches you that gold is the Bible of deity. And every time you worship God or give God the praise, you're putting gold up. You've heard this? Okay, and silver is uh, uh, redemption. And every time you tell somebody how to be saved, it lays up silver in heaven. And then, you know, uh, people are in the Bible are like jewels. So when you share the precious that uh, Jesus, everybody you lead to Christ puts out precious stones. And then it got wood, hay and stubble just burnt up. But you know what I think is this? I think it's the word working in you. I think I think the th- fact that the life of Christ is living in you. And those six things, guys, those six things are uh, is in everybody's ministry. They're not separated. We all have that six things in our, uh, and it's going to be manifested in the Word of God. Right quickly, Proverbs 3, and I'm going to run this. Uh, you've got the verses up there, so if you want to... But God said in Proverbs chapter 3, many people say gold, silver, and precious stones are far better than wood, hay, and stubble. Would you agree? Okay. But a lot of that's worldly things, isn't it? Okay. Proverbs 3 says, Happy is a man that findeth wisdom, and a man that getteth understanding. For the merchandising of it is better than the merchandising of silver, and the gain thereof of fine gold. She is the most precious than rubies, and all the things that can desire are not to corrupt, not to be compared unto them. So you have gold, silver, and rubies, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, as uh, Proverbs 8 talks about. Receive my instructions, not silver. The knowledge rather than choice gold. The wisdom is far better than rubies. Where do you find wisdom and knowledge and understanding? In the Word of God, Proverbs 16, for the sake of time, and, uh, and Proverbs 20. Gold is wisdom. Silver is understanding. Precious stones is knowledge. You know what wood is? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 19 talks wood as an idol. Hay, you know what hay is? Hay is a hedge. And then you have stubble. Stubble is what's left in the ground after you cut wheat down, and it rots. So if you have that in your ministry, having, well, I done made a joke about the Cubs. But many of you, many of you may have, still have wooden idols of baseball bats that you had signed from the Cubs. You know, <laughs> or hey, you've got a hedge around that. It's going to burn, guys. But every one of us has that in our personal ministry and some of it has it in our local church ministries. And it's going to be tested. And i got to share this with you. Remember the story of Three Little Pigs? How many still share that story with their grandchildren and children? What did the smart pig build his house out of? He's very wise, wasn't he? What did the other two pigs build out of? What happened to them? They didn't have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. They built their stuff on sticks and hay. Great story in that. All these things will be revealed by fire, okay? I will say fire for you guys. Probably ain't much different. (laughs) But anyway, you will see the reward. That reward is a maturity level of the doctrine that comes from the Word of God and standing in it. Wisdom and knowledge, understanding, Colossians 1 and and, and Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the being filled with the knowledge of His will and the wisdom and spiritual understanding. First Timothy chapter 4 talks about the words of faith and good doctrine. These are the gold, silver, and precious stones that we should work for. You know, we should be striving. You know, I may be dumber than a box of rocks sometimes in some situations. But once I come to understanding of this knowledge what I know of it so far and what I'm being taught daily by some of you guys and, and the ones that passed on, I'm probably going to spend the rest of my life understanding the dispensation of grace of God in which I live in and not so much worry about the prophecy program because you know what? It's going to fall in place. So I've got to get the wisdom and knowledge understanding to understand what I'm, I'm, 
I, I don't like to use the word I, but I think you know, understand what I'm talking about. Get the word inside of me so I'll be able to teach other people. And so this is what we want to strive for, incorruptible, uh, the incorruptible crown. When we get our rewards, guys, the Lord Jesus Christ, after we, we're sitting in the judgment seat of Christ, He t- presents us to God the Father as unblameable and holiness between God. And God the Father puts us in those positions. That's his job. We're going to be after you, after you, after you, I don't say you burnt to fairly do well, you know, but the things that you thought you'd build on and, and the Lord tests them with the word. And he, and he, when he at the judgment seat of Christ and you exit that, you know what you're going to be shining like a rainbow. You're going to have the glory of God on you. And we labor. Meanwhile, right quick until we get called away. Matt taught on this. You've been hearing it all week. We are labors together in God. Ye are God's building. He's got a house eternal in the heavens, don't he? But right now, where does the where does the Spirit of God, God the Holy Spirit, dwell in you? Where does He dwell right now? You have a you are a house that the Word of God is inside of you, and the Bible talks about in uh, Timothy chapter two. But there is a great house. There is not only vessels of gold and silver, but also what? Wood and earth. Some of honor and some of dishonor. If a man plurges himself of these, he shall be a vessel of honor. What is gold and silver? Precious stones? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wouldn't you want to be purged and have that? And wood, idols, hedges, stubs? Don't be a vessel of dishonor, be a vessel of honor. Now, you know, everybody can't be a Bishop Rick. Everybody can't be a special ed. Okay? <laughs> but you can, but you can, you can strive to get a crown and be crowned of righteousness. I'm going to close with a poem right quick. I didn't have too many jokes. So here, I wrote this poem in 1996. And uh, if I can get through it, uh, y'all bear with me. It's called Always Grace. I was saved at an early age, new in Christ and the treasure that waits. As I, would, as I got older, I would think I could do it myself. I fell out of sync. I always thought he had closed his doors, but that showed how little I knew of the Lord. So many years later, I called out his name. His door still open. He had never changed. He lets me know he was always there through good times and bad times with plenty to spare. The Lord has allowed me to grow stronger in the faith, and I praise Him and His Son with each passing day for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of His grace and to help spread the word to all human race. Father, once again, we thank You for the time. We thank You for the rewards that we get through Your Son, and we look for the glory that when that day happens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.